this is going to be a, a quickie this morning because uh, I have what, like 15 minutes and I got to get uh, get started actually working. Um, a previous video I mentioned I've been looking at Smart OS, really cool hypervisor OS. The only actual hardware I have available was crusty old i5 laptop with I thought six gigs, four gigs of memory. So really, the last bit of hardware, I mean, it's an i5-540 or something. Really ancient. Uh, SmartOS had some issue, right? And I wasn't really expecting it to work. OmniOS, different Illumos uh, distribution, boots just fine, playing around with it. It's fantastic. You know, you get ZFS and everything, which is just great. Um... But SmartOS and OmniOS and maybe some of the other Illumos have uh, uh, Linux branded zones, or LX zones, whatever the terminology is, and this is fantastic because um, one of the reasons I do have to keep Linux around is some Linux applications I I have to run. Um, so let's take a look at this really quick. Ten minutes. Um, Leave a comment if you want to go more in depth into Illumos, OmniOS, Zones, Linux Zones, ZFS, any of these topics. Um, I'm probably going to be using all of these things as I put together my new server for 2017. Uh, so where do we get started? Um, calling it LX0. Let's just do an export. CFG. I always forget my don't think so. Uh, for this, the SmartOS has a different configuration methodology. Zones are fantastic because it, it runs at essentially bare metal performance. It's OS virtualization and it's jailed, you know, a la FreeBSD jail. Uh, and they're very, very cool for, for separating things. And maybe one of the things we'll look at is setting up uh, OpenVMS. And Solaris or the Solaris Illumos stuff is so good for setting up virtual n network interfaces. The virtualized networking is par excellence in Illumos. Uh, so here we are. We have we set the NIC, um, set some properties that get passed in, and there's some scripts that uh, basically configure uh, the zones. So I had to create one for Slackware because uh, it's giving a OS not supported. You know, it does Ubuntu and CentOS and Debian you know, out of the box. Uh, so Slackware is a little little off. You basically take your, your user land um, and import it. Let's take a look at that. Show this off here. And again, this is a feeble, feeble machine. Like a SATA one drive, you know, laptop drive, 100 and 50 gig drive. I mean, this is this is a tiny machine. So what what we're doing here is pretty impressive. Um, so if this was a, a native install, you'd see a lot of this stuff would be uh, would be empty here. But it's then rebuilt all this stuff. Um, so that is not too interesting. So let's let's boot this. So now we have global zone, just the the main main zone, you know, what you'd naturally be in, and LX0, that's the one we just booted. You can get in there with the Z login, and dash C, we're going to go hit the console. There, I still need to do some tweaking um, to get it to be able to do the login list. So it's running a Getty on console device, and so it expects a login. There's a way to configure it so you you don't have you can bypass that login step haven't gotten there yet with Slackware, but if you do one of the other, you know, if you do Red Hat, CentOS, whatever, it, it should work just fine. So here we have Slackware in a zone. So you see we're brand Z and yeah, so an M520. So you can see the, the ancient CPU we're at here. So this is pretty cool in and of itself. But that I can run some Linux apps here. So 
so networking works just fine. So we can go out here, um, do all that sort of stuff. Let's do a so we can we can get out all the, the routing, everything works fine. Take a look at our route table. So our gateway is configured correctly. And uh, let's see, what else do we... Oh yeah, I wanted to show off that it can actually run some decently complex applications. So FireUp9, which is one of the data analysis tools I use, it's Java, so it's based on Eclipse, so Java, SWT, all that stuff. And again, on m more modern hardware, this would seem snappier, but this is not slow. This is certainly better than running in, say, a virtual box style um, virtualization. And yeah, I know I don't have WebKit GTK3, but that's just fine. So pretty cool. So let's run our, our categorizer here. So pretty snappy. Let me get back over here. And so some of the cool things about zones. Um, so it's um, if you're SSH, then it's double tilde dot to go drop out of your zone. PR stat capital Z, and then you can split your PR stat and list out um, by zones. So we can now see uh, the CPU and memory consumption of each zone here. So zones are really, really cool, and that's one of the things I was going to do with, you know, I was thinking smart OS because I really want to virtualize a lot of this stuff. OmniOS might, it, this might work as well, just a little bit more manual um, uh, for the new server, but CFS, everything helps. Um, but zones are really, really cool, and people have uh, reported great success here with the uh, Linux zone. And I want to share this really quickly this morning uh, because I'm super excited about it that Slackware runs a lot of the tools I need run. Uh, so this is this is some good opportunity uh, for me to consolidate. So server might be instead of just doing the storage side in the Illumos, right? So just Illumos for storage to get ZFS and things. Actually do some of the, the compute on that side as well. Um, but yeah, look at that. I mean, SSH, X works. Let's fire up my, my decision tree learner here. And this is a decently... Con so this is... Um, you know, this is Java with... Eclipse, you know, it's it's a, a reasonably complex application, working just fine. Um, so chances are it'll, you know, it's not perfect, but chances are it'll do pretty well across the board. Um, and I'm going to do some additional testing with both Ubuntu and uh, CentOS, uh, Linux branded zones, because um, those are, for a lot of cases, more practical. And one of the things that might be interesting is to do you know, to have a ZFS cluster uh, for some of the high performance computing to have this to be able to do some of the components um, that are Linux only. Um, thinking of things from IBM, for example, some of their software that is Linux only, um, but to be able to run it on a, a better back end at full speed, so not virtualized with, you know, even KVM, which is some of, what's that? Level one hypervisor would be KVM, which is faster than a level two, which is something like VirtualBox. Um, I know I use VirtualBox a lot, but I'm not too concerned about performance for the stuff I do here at home. Uh, but yeah, so I guess I'll, I'll wrap this up now. Uh, there you have it. Uh, Slackware in a Linux-branded zone. Um, zones are fantastic. ZFS is fantastic. I will be doing more videos on Illumos and the great thing about Illumos before I wrap this up, because I really do have, you know, like two minutes left. Uh, the great thing about Illumos is it assuages my guilt. I have, <coughs> I have feelings about Oracle, and, you know, I'm a huge Sun fan, and Sun has been with me kind of my, most of my life in computing, right? Love the Sun gear. Spark is fantastic. Sun OS was, you know, it's dated, but it was, you know, kick-ass BSD. Uh, 
Solaris, and you can see this culmination of Solaris. I mean, it can do some really amazing things. Uh, but Oracle is just, eh, you know, not a, not a huge fan of Oracle uh, with their business practices. One, and also their database, you know, isn't the, the killer it used to be. So I will leave it there, um, but leave a comment if you think this stuff is cool and you want to see more videos on Zones, OmniOS, SmartOS, ZFS, any of the related stuff. Uh, I'm off for my first day back after vacation. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone, and I'll be back in another video soon.